It has been a, a remarkable challenge attempting to maintain a healthy pluralism in India. And several years ago, there was a, um, uh, a, 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 a tremendous challenge towards all of this in, um, in uh, a town called Ayodhya in, um, in, uh, in central India, in northern India. What happened was that, um, the, that, it, that the Hindus, uh, many centuries ago, had built a Hindu temple at this town of Ayodhya. Then there was a Muslim ruler, 1528, who took over that region, that, that region, he was called Babur, and he destroyed the Hindu temple and built a Muslim mosque. Uh, he says, only God is Allah, <laughs> these uh, God of Ram, this Hindu God Ram, who was, uh, who was worshipped there at Ayodhya, is a false god, is not Allah. And so he destroyed that shrine to the god Ram and established a mosque there. And so for some 500 years, that's the way it was. And then this reality of the mosque being there at Ayodhya began to be challenged by the Hindus, particularly by the DJP, uh, who were... Um, uh, pressing for this former Hindu temple to become a, uh, a Muslim, a Mus uh, to become a Hindu temple again, and not a Hindu, uh, not, a, not, a, not a Hindu shrine, and, and not a Muslim shrine. And so the conflict between the Muslims and the, and the, uh, and the Hindus began to intensify over that, over that, uh, over that, that place. Uh, consequently, in 1990, there was a um, there was a, uh, an attack on this on this uh, mosque, and uh, and the mosque was actually uh, was actually destroyed, and um, that just led to a conflagration over all of India. It was horrendous, and then slowly things dampened down, and then in 1992. Uh, the political leader of the BJP political party uh, got in a little Volkswagen bus, I think it was, and he and his uh, friends uh, toured India going north, 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 finally arrived at Ayodhya. By the time they got there, the caravan had 200,000 people in it. Um, and this is Hindus, you know, uh, who are determined to, uh, to uh, rebuild the Temple of Ram, not just dismantle the mosque, but actually rebuild the temple of Ram right there, uh, where the temple had been at one time. And um, uh, it, was, it was just simply horrendous. There was a thousand, about a thousand people killed across India, uh, just eruption of violence, Muslim, uh, Hindu violence, over this, this situation with this, uh, this, this temple, having to do with the struggle between Allah, as Muslims understood it, and Ram, as Hindus understood it. How do you put a pluralist society together with that kind of conflict and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, confusion? It, it was simply an amazing challenge. What happened uh, was that across India, men and women who were committed to peacemaking began to stand up and they said, we won't participate in this violence. Hindus would say, Muslims have always been our neighbors. And we're not going to become their enemies, come what may. And uh, Muslims would stand up and say, Hindus have always been our neighbors. We're going to stand with them. In fact, in different places across the country where mosques or Hindu temples have been destroyed in the riots that ensued in this conflict, all over the country, there was locations where Muslims and, Christ uh, Muslims and, and, uh, and Hindus would join hands together in villages here and there across India to rebuild the mosque that had been destroyed, if it was a mosque that was destroyed, or to rebuild the Hindu temple that had been destroyed, working together to do that. It was an amazing thing to see and to hear about. And so that working together at rebuilding these mosques and, and Hindu temples that had been destroyed went a long way towards bringing a healing into the... Into the uh, 
uh, experience of the, uh, of the Hindus and the Muslim people of, um, of India. So although it was going so bad, <laughs> at the end of the day, men and women of peacemaking commitments stepped forward, joined hands together, reaching across the religious divide, and worked together to rebuild the, uh, the peace of the nation, which I think is India at its best. It, uh, it is a revelation of how this enormously large uh, democratic society of well over a billion people uh, is able to find the way through forward as a secular, pluralist society in which a whole variety of communities are welcomed. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Now, just one word on the church in the midst of all of this. Um, India has a large Muslim population and, of course, a overwhelmingly Hindu population of uh, probably close to a billion people. Um, and in the midst of it all are these churches. One of the gifts of the church within that Hindu milieu and Muslim milieu is the conviction that the earth is real and good and that history, that God is taking history forward with purpose and direction. Within the Hindu understanding, we talked about this, history goes round and round with no purpose. But the Christian message says, no, history has a purpose. It begins in a garden and it is going forwards towards a grand city that God is building. So God is at work at history, bringing about purpose and direction. And the Christian gospel says the earth is real. It's good. It should be developed uh, to the glory of God. It's not a meaningless um, illusion. It has purpose and direction. Those themes when they enter into a Hindu culture, begin to be very transformative. As for example, I mentioned how Radha Krishnan, just a bit ago, worked so energetically at attempting to encourage the Hindu people among whom he worked, and he was a Hindu, to take uh, the development of the good earth very seriously, to work at that. An acquaintance of mine called Leslie Newbegin, who lived in India for many years, some 40 years, uh, says in, in one of his books that uh, in his experience as a bishop in South India, he found that if you would take, uh, if you would send a Bible woman, they call them Bible women, uh, into the villages and they would spend a week reading or telling the Bible stories, beginning with Genesis 1 and just go through the Bible telling the stories. If you would come back to that village a year later, you would find that the crops were better than they were before. And Newbegin says, why? And he attributes, it to, he attributes it to this biblical worldview that the earth is real and it's good and it is to be developed and God is taking history, not in a meaningless cycle, but in a purposeful way, in a direction towards the fulfillment of his kingdom. So all of history is moving forward toward God's grand plan, get God's, God's grand design. And those ideas, as they begin to enter that village culture, by hearing the biblical stories, contributed very directly, very significantly, to a more energetic digging of the gardens, a more energetic work at bringing about cultural transformation in the village. He said that would happen even if no church was formed. Now, if a church was formed, which becomes a community proclaiming this biblical faith, that would make even a greater difference, wouldn't it? But the worldview transformation that was taking place as people listened to the biblical accounts 
would contribute very directly to uh, economic development and moving forward. Um, I, I find that very, very interesting, that there's something about our view of history that very directly contributes to our commitment to community development and, uh, and, moving, and moving forward. Churches are growing very rapidly in India uh, today, and um, I think one of the reasons is, uh, is Jesus. Uh, Jesus introduces people into, to God. And uh, with all of these many, many divinities you have in India, um, in the midst of all of that, here, here Jesus walks across, the, walks across the world view, the meta-narrative of Jesus, the story of Jesus, the account of Jesus, and behold, they find that God is our loving Heavenly Father. And, um, and he is one. And uh, there is not uh, this need for all these attention to these competing divinities and so forth. That there is Jesus standing in the midst of it all saying, look, you know, I want to introduce you to the Creator. <laughs> and he loves you. And, uh, and, and he is ready to, uh, to invite you into his kingdom and to walk with him into the future with the wonderful plan God has for all of us. Um, I... Uh, I, uh, I get to India occasionally, and I'm always impressed with how the churches are just packed out and new churches uh, developing uh, all across the country nowadays. It's, uh, it's quite a remarkable thing happening as Christian faith and Hinduism meet one another in that amazing country called India.